Hello everyone, my name is John Adams and welcome to another live here at Biosphere. We are standing in the original kitchen that the Biosphere used to prepare all of their meals. And you know, one of the really cool things is people look at this kitchen when they come and visit the site and they're amazed at how modern it looks. And so for something that was constructed, constructed in the late 80s, early 90s, um, you know, they took into consideration of trying to incorporate all of the modern amenities that would have been available at that time. And so this is where they would have prepared every single meal when they were inside. And it was a 24 hour, and so they would have to cook all three meals and then it would rotate to the next biosphere. So one of the funny stories that I heard is that, let's say that it was my, you know, I was up to cook this day and I'm not a very good cook. So as you can imagine, food was, as it is today, extremely important. And much of what they did and they talked about centered around food and the preparation of that. So if I was up and I'm not a very good cook, well, let's just say everybody's um, attitude wasn't as good and as chipper as maybe you would like. Now, the person who's filming this, Katie, if she was up for cooking and, every, and she was a really good cook, well, then everybody's morale was much higher uh, when her rotation came around. Um, that, and that's because you had to be really creative about what you cook because they, you know, they had, you know, they did have some tilapia that they grew with the, uh, the rice that they had inside. They did have goats, chickens, and pigs. None of those were really staples in their diet. The one thing that was a staple of us eat sweet potato fries and we see them cooked in a wide variety of ways today I mean they're pretty popular but if this is all you ate every single day I know one of the former biospherians Jane Pointer told me that if she never sees a sweet potato again she will not be heartbroken because literally their skin turned yellow because they ate so many of these and the keratin that was available in the uh, the sweet potato um, and so the other thing that they ate a lot of was like a lab lab bean um, and so, you know, this is a bean, as I understand it, that was pr is primarily set up as more of like an agricultural feed uh, byproduct or product and, you know, not necessarily something that you would want to eat. So this is a plant that kind of looks like corn, if you've ever seen uh, rice and rice patties in the agricultural space. Um, they did have some peanuts. They did grow coffee, for example. Uh, but again, although they were successful in growing them, as you can imagine, if you had to grow a quantity within the confines of Biosphere 2, and remember the structure is 3.14 acres is the footprint. The farm area is only about a half acre, and although they tried to take advantage of all of the real estate to potentially grow crops that they could consume, um, it was still relatively limited. And so although they had enough from a nutritional standpoint, they were definitely calorie deficient. They were always burning more calories than they were consuming. Um, and so that made the day inside things that you know, they had you know, a difficulty with is, and one of the things that people often ask, well, did they have animals inside? And so they had difficulty uh, getting sort of the husbandry of the animals to have a consistent participate. And I heard this in a personal communication I had with one of the Biosphereans is, so we, I mentioned they had goats, they had chickens, they had pigs. Well, they had really hoped like the pigs, for example, that would be potentially a protein input back into their diet. The pigs would consume a lot of the byproducts that they were not able to consume. Um, and so you know, they, would, they would basically get rid of a lot of that waste rather than having to just throw it away. Well, the pigs needed a pretty high protein diet to have any type of level of reproduction. Chickens need the same thing to lay eggs. You know, really, the, the one animal that did really well that they didn't anticipate were the goats. So the goats would eat virtually anything, surprise, right? We, we hear that all the time. And the other thing was is that the goats were always producing young and they were regularly producing milk so they could have goat milk um, and use that not only to drink but also to make other things inside. Now, one of the things they grew in the rainforest a lot of, and often people ask, well, did they have alcohol when they were inside? Um, you know, something that you probably would like if you're confined to a space with a symbol for two years, you know, every now and then you might want to drink, right? Well, you know, although they did have a few uh, bottles of wine, as I understand it, that came in with them, that was quickly exhausted. And so they had to resort to banana wine. So around the perimeter of the rainforest is an area that we call a ginger belt. And so there are a number of species uh, that were designed and put in place to block the light from coming in. And one of those is bananas. So we regularly, even today, see 
uh, bananas producing fruit and they would use those to produce uh, banana wine inside. Now for those of you who are big coffee drinkers, and I know many of you are, the amount of beans that were produced from the coffee that was inside Biosphere 2 um, was pretty good but still limited and when you equated that it amounted to basically you'd only get about a cup every two weeks. Um, and so that's, you know, for many people I just don't know if, if you'd be able to make it or not because I know a lot of us are really dependent on having that, that cup of joe in the morning. But uh, nonetheless they were able to make it, they were very creative with things, I mean, and they also grew things like peppers and onions. Um, but again, it was limited and they had to be very conservative about how they cooked, how much of what they cooked, uh, and what they used to cook in certain ingredients. And again, if you burned a meal, you know, they, that, there were dire consequences for that because it wasn't like you could just go out and get more ingredients because those ingredients were likely already slated for the upcoming meal. So it was something they really had to take into consideration. But you look here, I mean, they had a stove, they had an oven, uh, they had a late 80s, one could imagine incorporating into a kitchen, late 80s, early 90s, we're in here, and, and I'm told, and I don't know which one this is, uh, but one of our faculty's brother is a really well-known kitchen designer in New York, and he was here visiting, and he said he immediately recognized the designer of this kitchen by the style, um, and I, as I understand it, it is a, a German kitchen designer who put this together for them. I wish I knew the name, We're, we'll look that up for you and see if we can find it, but uh, that was pointed out to me with someone who you know, does this for a living. Um, one of the other things we wanted to mention and have everybody sort of take note of, and, and if you haven't, uh, take a look at our Facebook page. You'll notice that we've put out an invitation or an invite for EarthFest. So this will be a virtual EarthFest. It's going to happen next Wednesday, that's April 22nd. Uh, we're going to kick things off at around 10 a.m. We've got a link on there where you can register uh, for the events that we're offering. But we're going to kick things off with a virtual earth run around the, the historic Biosphere 2 property. Uh, we're going to show you the Visitor Center introductory movie, which gives you a really good perspective of what's going on here today, uh, the type of research that's happened, and a little bit about the history. And then we're going to dive into some specific research uh, topics with our research teams. And we're going to start off with a panel um, of two researchers who recently led a research campaign inside the Bias for Two Rainforest, exploring the response of this system to a drought and equating that to what we're seeing happen around the world today in tropical forests. We're then going to hear from two former Biosphereans, uh, Jane Pointer and Tabor McCollum, and they're going to give their personal account of what it was like to build Biosphere Two and then live inside with the same six people for two years. And then we're going to close the panel discussions uh, with two of our researchers who are working on our ocean system and the renovations and the type of ex experiments that they're planning to do in this system and the relevancy that it has globally. Um, and then finally, we'll hear from some K-12 kids who recently competed in the SARSF Science um, Fair. And we're going to hear firsthand from them, the, the winners of the respective divisions, uh, a little bit about their projects and why they selected what they did. Uh, for their experiments. So it should be a really exciting afternoon um, and a, we hope that you can join us for the entire day but if you can't, uh, you know, go ahead and, and take a look at the schedule that we've listed and pop in for what really interests you. We hope everyone is very doing well, being safe and again we will have another live post on Monday uh, and Friday and if you've got subject matters or areas that you would like to see inside Bias for Two, go ahead and shoot them over to our team. We'll do what we can um, to highlight and, and feature those in upcoming posts. Uh, but again, thank you very much for joining us today as part of our Bias for Two Live.